Laura Johnson, and I serve as the campus pastor of Apex United Methodist Church. Welcome to week two of this virtual class on discovering your gifts. Last session, we talked about the big picture of spiritual gifts, meaning we discussed God's mission in the world and our role in it. This week, we're going to dig deep into calling. What does it mean to be called by God? How do you know when God is calling you to do something? But before we get there, I want to remind you of where we're going in the big picture of this course. At the heart of these classes is one important assumption, our thesis, if you will. In every season of our lives, God gives us a mission and the means to achieve it. How we receive, accept, and pursue that mission is up to us and our spiritual fitness. I want to help you in this course. Name the mission God has given you in this moment in your life. And I want to help you harness your spiritual gifts so that you can pursue this mission. And I want to help you grow in your spiritual health so that you can pursue God's mission freely and wholeheartedly. That's what this class is all about. So don't forget to grab the, the three things that you need to have with you today. A copy of the Discover Your Gifts application guide, a journal, and something to write with so that you can write down thoughts you have, reflections you have, things that strike you. Now that we've covered all of these details, let's get started. One of my favorite passages in the Bible is the passage of the prophet Samuel when he was a boy being called by God. Now Samuel was a miracle baby. He was born to a woman who was barren and in her gratitude to God, she sent Samuel to the temple to learn with the great priest Eli. One night while Samuel was in the temple of the Lord and Eli was asleep in his room, Samuel heard a voice. It was the Lord calling him, but Samuel didn't understand that it was God. So hear now how this story goes. It's going to be from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 4 through 9. The Lord called Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So Samuel went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you. My son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And God did speak. God gave Samuel his first mission as a prophet, and so began Samuel's journey of ministry, which led him to anoint King David and forever change the course of his nation's history. Today, we're going to talk about calling. Sometimes, calling is as momentous and mystical as Samuel's calling. Other times, God's calling comes to us more quietly through more ordinary means. So here's what we're going to cover in this session today. We're going to consider the question, could I be called by God? What is a calling and who gets one? We're going to talk about the importance of spiritual disciplines in discerning God's calling. And we're going to talk about the importance of Christian community and the practice of discernment in Christian community as we respond to God's call. So first, what is calling and who gets one? Well, a divine calling is a summons from God for you to do or be something for the sake of God's mission. Sometimes callings can be vocational, meaning it can be a summons to a career or a long-term commitment to a particular cause. So 
my calling to be a pastor is a vocational calling. It's not something I can answer once and be done with. It's a summons I answer day in and day out. I've known people who have vocational callings that weren't directly related to church ministry. I've known folks called by God into the teaching profession or the medical profession, nurses, doctors, mental health counselors, all of whom point to a calling from God that got them there. I've known folks who serve in the government or as attorneys who name a sense of calling to their particular vocation. I've known folks from business careers who came to their career because of this sense of calling from God to accomplish this or that for God's kingdom. Sometimes you see calling is vocational. And we can have many types of vocational callings at once. I am called to be a pastor, but I also believe that I am called to be a wife and a parent. These are not just parts of my life. They are parts of who God is calling me to be in this world for the sake of God's kingdom. Now, other times, calling can be situational, meaning it can be a summons to respond to a particular situation at a particular moment in time. For example, I was at a park with my kids once and I saw a mom with a toddler and a new baby and she looked frazzled like she was about at the end of her rope. And I'd been there before so I could sympathize with her, but as I saw her, I felt more than sympathy in my heart. I felt a divine stirring, telling me that I needed to offer her some friendly words of encouragement. I knew that it was God's calling. I didn't hear a voice like Samuel did, but I've trained the ears of my heart to listen to God's nudges that often happen in very quiet ways. And so I recognized that stirring within as God's calling. I struck up a conversation and we talked for a while and I left her with some words of encouragement. Now, did that moment change her life? Probably not. Did it impact her life? I'm not sure. We don't always know the results of our efforts when we answer God's call, but I know that, small as it may seem, God asked me to be present in that moment to that woman on God's behalf. And that is enough for me. That's an example of situational calling. Situational callings can take on more forms than I have time to name today because they are as varied as we are. <clears throat> Sometimes they are a calling to a particular moment. Sometimes they are, they are a calling to get involved in a particular mission or ministry for a time. Folks who volunteer in children's and youth ministries at churches will often name a sense of calling that got them there. Folks who volunteer as visitors of the sick or imprisoned are often doing so because God called them to that particular ministry for a time. This isn't the work that they do in their careers, and it may not be what they will do for the next 50 years, but it's God's calling nevertheless. As you consider these two types of callings, I hope something very important has been made clear to you. God calls everyone. Every single follower of Jesus will be called by God. Sometimes that's a vocational calling for life or for a season. And sometimes that calling is to a particular moment or a particular ministry, but every calling is holy and important and is part of God's mission to heal and save the world. I'd like to pause for a moment and give you a few minutes to journal or if you're with a group of people to discuss. Think of a time when you suspect you have experienced a calling. Now, you may not be sure, and that's okay. But I want you to reflect for a few moments about what it felt like in your heart, how you reacted to it, and why, when you felt that stirring from God. So let's take five minutes, and then we'll jump on back into the session. The next question that we often ask ourselves is this, how do I know that what I'm sensing is a calling from God? In the church, we use the word discernment to describe the process by which we evaluate the stirrings in our heart to see if they are God's calling or not. Discernment is the process of listening for and understanding God's voice. For the rest of this session, we're gonna talk about the process of discernment. The first thing I would tell you is that discernment cannot happen faithfully without 
spiritual disciplines. Remember, discernment is the process of listening for and understanding God's voice. And spiritual disciplines are God-given tools to help us learn to listen for and understand God's voice. Things like prayer and fasting, meditation and study. We have so many tools at our disposal to help us focus our hearts and minds on God so that we can hear God's voice clearly through the myriad of voices that our world throws at us. So, if you are not disciplined in your spiritual practices, meaning doing prayer and study on a daily basis, then you will not be able to hear God speak clearly. Likewise, if you aren't studying scripture, it becomes easier to misinterpret God's calling. God will never call you to do or be something that goes against the heart of scripture. For example, scripture tells us to pray for and forgive our enemies. So God will not call you to seek revenge on somebody who's hurt you. We need to be mindful of how our sense of calling lines up with the heart of scripture. And we can't do that unless we are reading scripture on a regular basis. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, God tells us, When you search for me, you will find me if you seek me with all your heart. God wants us to hear his calling, but in order to open our hearts and ears to know and hear God, we have to seek God with our whole heart through spiritual disciplines. The second thing I want to make clear about discernment is that when it comes to God's calling, God usually calls us in ways that will honor who we are and what makes us unique. I am not called to be a statistician because my brain does not process numbers in the same brilliant way that statisticians do. I am called to be a pastor because of who God made me to be, my gifts, my experiences, and my passions in life. Frederick Beekner has a beautiful quote that can help us in our quest to discern God's calling. He says, the place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. When God calls you, God wants you to invest your whole self in whatever God calls you to do. So God will likely call you to a vocation or a ministry or a task that stirs you in the depths of your heart. God will likely call you to something that combines your hopes and dreams with your gifts and experiences and with the causes that you care about most. Now, does that mean that calling is always easy? Goodness, no. I was terrified to answer my call to be a pastor because I was terrified to speak in public. But the call to shepherd people was so aligned with my heart that I had to say yes and learn to be comfortable speaking in public. This quote by Frederick Beekner doesn't mean that God's calling will always be attractive to us. It means that God's calling will speak to a core place in our hearts. The last thing I want to discuss about discernment is the importance of Christian community as you listen for and respond to God's summoning. If you want to be sure God is calling you, then seek counsel from another wise and faithful soul. I would not have been able to say yes to my calling to be a pastor if it weren't for my husband's encouraging encouragement of my gifts for ministry. And if it wasn't for my parents saying, we were wondering how long it would take for you to go into ministry when I asked them to pray with me about going to seminary. If it wasn't for friends who helped me imagine what it might look like to be a pastor and if that's something that I could do, I needed trusted voices in my life to point out my gifts, to help me wrestle with my questions, and to affirm what God had placed on my heart. We all need people in our lives who can do this for us as we discern a calling. One of my favorite movies is Disney's Moana because it's a movie all about calling. Little Moana is called to a very important mission, one that is scary and pushes her farther than she ever thought she could go, but one that speaks to her heart. And the movie is about her process of receiving and answering this calling for the sake of saving the world. One of the most lovable characters in the movie is her grandmother, who ends up being Moana's wise and faithful counsel, helping her embrace the calling within. 
We all need someone like Moana's grandmother. Someone who can help name our strengths and give us the space we need to listen for God's voice deep within. I invite you to write down a few names of people who come to mind for you so that if you're discerning something, you can ask them to pray with you and talk with you about it. If no one comes to mind, maybe it's time to think about expanding your circles. If you're not connected to a small group or class in your church or faith community, then you need to find one. You need to invest in relationships that will help you learn about and hear the voice of God if you want to do the work of discernment well. As we close our time together today, I want to leave you with some homework for you to do and before you watch the next video. Spend some time discussing or journaling about these questions. What spiritual disciplines help you hear the voice of God? What spiritual disciplines do you need to begin practicing? Let's go ahead and start the process of defining the mission statement for this season of our lives. So in light of Beekner's quote about calling that we discussed earlier in this session, how are you especially moved by the world's needs? What makes your heart ache? What makes your heart sing? In the next session, we're going to talk through the theological and biblical foundations for understanding the various spiritual gifts. I'll see you then.